Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. I know I haven't posted in a while. I believe this is the first video of the year. No, I put out the cold start one, but I mean, that really wasn't a video, but I appreciate you guys for hanging around. I'm in Maryland, as you know, and it's winter. There's nothing going on. Everything's closed. I can't work on the car. It's rainy. It's too cold. It's, it sucks because there's a lot that needs to be done, but that's a whole nother story. But uh, yeah, I figured while there's so much downtime and I've been playing around with the laptop a lot, just trying to change things up, just fine tune everything. Uh, I actually been looking at like all the logs from the last two track outings, just seeing if there's anything there that needs to be changed or adjusted or if there's anything that could be gained from anything. So I've been looking at that, and I've also been trying new stuff out. Uh, as you can see, I've also been messing with the cold start and, like, the drivability and stuff. So, um, yeah, I mean, what else is there to do? I can't do what I want to do, so I might as well stay inside and be on this laptop getting things right. But while I'm here just looking over some things and changing things up, I figured it would be a good opportunity to make a video on this and uh, maybe help some people out or educate a few people because, I mean, believe it or not, there's a lot of people that are kind of clueless to all this stuff. I mean, they pay people to uh, do this for them, tune the car and make adjustments, which there's nothing wrong with that, but uh, I don't do that. I learned everything. I learned on my own research, YouTube, uh, forums, all that. So if I can share a little, the little bit of knowledge that I have and maybe it can help somebody out, then uh, that's a win in my book. But um, on this video, I'm just gonna strictly talk about the advanced tables. And if you're new here, maybe you are, maybe you aren't, but I got a 4.8 with a turbo in my Fox body and the car runs on Holley Terminator X. And uh, you know, you're kind of limited to what you can do on this and can't do. So that's one of the main fallbacks. You know, I kind of wish I would have saved up a couple more hundred dollars and got the HP, maybe. But, you know, there's still some cool things you can do. And I've never really messed with anything else like fuel tech or hull tech or anything. So I don't know if you can do stuff like this. But, I mean, with the Holly, you can literally make it do anything. I mean, for those of you that seen an old video, I used to run a shift light through the Holly with a $10 Amazon LED bulb. So, I mean, you can really do anything. To, if you use your mind, you can make up anything and make it do anything. So that's pretty much what I do with the advanced tables. Some of them are necessary, but some of them are safety. Some of them are uh, just manipulating things. So um, I guess let me flip this around and I'll show you guys what I got going on. All right, here's my little $120 Best Buy cheapo laptop that i've had for about two years now that never had any issues with it probably because i only use it for the car i don't use it for like regular internet stuff so maybe that's why i don't know but anyway here's my terminator x software got it open right now you go up to the top that's the advanced tables if you're watching this video i'm sure you know how to get all these on here or have an idea if you don't you just go to add individual config and you click whatever one you want. But anyway, we're just talking about the advanced tables in this. So advanced ICF. And so here's all mine. I'm just gonna go over everything I have. This right here, trans brake timing. Timing offset goes with the boost. Uh, it's enabled when the trans brake is enabled and uh, TPS has to be over 1%. I have the TPS because if I hit this, then it's going to be messing with the timing. And uh, I don't want it to do that. It'll be adding 10 degrees even if I don't want it to. So it enables as soon as I put my foot on the pedal. And uh, this is my setup for my car. You could try it if you want. I don't know if it'll work on yours, but this is a 4.8 with a S480. So I actually give it some timing. And then I pull it all out. Uh, this has actually been changed. I usually just drag it out, but you can hear my car kind of load at, 
down, kind of lose power when I pull it too fast. Uh, I can throw a video right here for an example. So you can hear it kind of dips down and then pop, 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 pop. So uh, I'm trying to get rid of that. Honestly, I don't even think I need to pull timing at this point with this new converter. With the old Jake's converter, I used to add about 15 degrees and then pull it down to maybe, uh, I think negative eight, because negative 16, it would 100% fall on its face, but this new converter just wants to keep one riding, so I can pull 16, and it builds boost like crazy. Uh, I actually have a log up right here, so you can see, the blue line's the timing, RPM is the green, and light blue is the boost, and you can see when the timing gets pulled out, how much faster the boost builds. So, um, yeah, it definitely works very well. <clears throat> and, um, you know, these kind of dips or whatever, it's going in and out of the range. So, uh, a lot of people say to put all the timing back to zero on the table. So, that's something I just started doing. So, this would be a 12-pound leaf. Uh, I don't know if it'll work or not. I usually just keep it down. But, uh, we'll see. Excuse me. So my next table is Transbrake Fuel. So this is a fuel flow modifier that goes with Boost. And it's enabled when I'm on the Transbrake and it's TPS 5%, just as a little extra thing. So after, hold on, let me go back to uh, the first table real quick. <clears throat> so the way I have this set up, everybody on the internet says, oh, run the full timing until three pounds, then pull it out. The three pounds means nothing. What you want to do is keep the full timing in or added timing, whatever, until it gets on the two step and then pull it out. So like I said, this log is nothing like uh, that set up right now, but you can see I'm not pulling the timing out until it's on the two step, which is three pounds, <laughs> funny enough. But uh, usually it's about four or five. So uh, it actually doesn't dip down until five pounds, five and a half pounds. But uh, just take a log of you on the trans brake, and as soon as you start seeing it on the trans brake with the squiggly lines, that's when you want to start gradually pulling the timing. If you pull it too fast, it's going to fall off and fall on its face depending on the converter. So that's why I have my fuel pretty much the same as the timing. So. Once again, once it's on the two-step at four pounds or whatever it may be, that's when I add fuel. It just kind of helps build boost a little bit. Table three, uh, that's just a flex fuel timing thing. I actually should just turn that off because I don't use the flex sensor anymore. It's actually caused more problems than good, so I turned it off. Now this one, all these tables right here, I'm sure I'll get criticized on, but uh, it's my car, so I don't care. This is torque timing pool, that's what I named it. The timing offset, it goes by RPM and boost. And it starts when the boost is over 1.8. Boost time is over 1.8. Uh, I did it over 1.8 because I don't want this to activate in first gear because there's not a lot of load in first gear. I want it to activate after the shift. So the car shifts around 2, 2.2. So that's when I want it to activate. This will pull it right as it gets to the peak of first gear when I shift into second. And what this is for, if you see, peak torque. I, the car's never been on a dyno, so I don't know what peak torque actually is. But I just guesstimated from the range of 55 to 62. You know, that's not really pulling much right here, but two or three degrees, and it's pulling it over 16 pounds. So that's for the shift. So when I shift into second and third gear, you don't want a lot of timing at the peak torque when you're shifting because that's how you end up bending rods. I don't know from experience, but that's what I was told. That's what I was you know, taught and researched. So I'm just gonna go with it. It seems to work. I, I don't see any um, difference on the ET. So uh, it's just kind of a safety thing. And then uh, my next safety thing is fuel pressure cut. <clears throat> Timing offset again, fuel pressure and boost. Activates at 60% TPS. 
So this right here, fuel pressure goes with the boost. And there's a little threshold here, but say it does make more boost and less fuel pressure, it'll pull the timing and pretty much cut the motor off. Next one is oil pressure cut, same deal. If it drops below a certain amount of oil pressure at a certain RPM, it's gonna yank a thousand, I think it's a thousand pounds of fuel out of it, which will kill the motor completely. And then the last one is my uh, wannabe trash control. I'm actually in the process of trying to get a drive shaft sensor. So this will no longer be set up the getaway. But I got this from Turbo John. I can't take credit for it. Timing offset, RPM, and boost time. And it activates when the TPS over 10. And it goes off the boost time. So right here is the boost. It's the RPM. And that's the timing that will be pulled. So this usually would be the drive shaft speed. But I'm running the getaway on the RPM. So, if it's, you know, half a second in, and it's all the way at 6,000 already, it's going to pull 14 degrees and pretty much kill it. Uh, I've tested this out. It seems to work okay. But, uh, this is strictly for the street, the, the track. i got to turn this off of the track because it will 100% kill the power. Because the RPM is climbing so fast, but on the street it's a lot more tamed down. Well, there you go. Just a quick little video. Well, hopefully it's quick and not drug out and rambling and trying to make sense of all this because I know how I am, but hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys maybe learned something or got some ideas. Uh, that's why I'm here. That's why I make these videos to help people out similar to me that, you know, don't have a, a big team of people and people that they pay to help work on their stuff and tune it. So, um, like I said, leave a comment. If you have any questions, message me, let me know, and uh, I'll try to help you out as much as I can. Sorry for the lack of content lately. Uh, hopefully this winter just flies by, but uh, there's definitely no lack of work. I have plenty of work to do. Just have to uh, get to it, bundle up, get to it, get the camera out, and make some videos. So uh, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Father told me to repent, I had to trash my sins. I done